What's up guys, this is Cher talking, welcome back to my channel. On today's video, I'll be making a full review for the Romancing Festival Lolo banner. And we have a special guest, Pratinha, cosplaying as Lolo, as always. is here to guarantee that I give a good uh, grading for Lolo. Lolo is a meta character, he gives attack, defense, boost, healings, BP battery, very useful. Scarecrow is a gunner for Remembrance, but also outside content as well. Can give lots of effects for blunt based squads. And Gurman is an MR specialist for Remembrance Battles, giving many effects as well. Now, we shall go to the rsrs.xyz website, start talking about Lolo. Okay, 120% endurance and 120% will. They buffed endurance, now it's much higher. And keeps Lolo on safe values for the future. We only have 116% STR and agility, those values are low. Well, Lolo is not made for damage. But you will only have problems if the enemy has many agility debuffs or if you self-debuff when attacking like in the 7 heroes fight. But it's a very okay value if you consider that he's here just to support. Now, on the start of battle, Lola will increase the BP dodge of everyone by 5 points. And then recover 3 BP points for everyone as well. That's pretty crazy already. And then on the end of turn 3, he will then cast it again and increase it by another 5 and then recover 5 VP then on turn 6 it will increase yet again by another 5 and then recover 7 VP so you are generating VP and also increasing the VP uh, gauge of your characters this will help you in battles that have special effects on enemies that will increase your VP cost or decrease your VP gauge we had fights like this in the past starting with the Divine Beast fights and we were also recovering to help keep keep using good skills from your characters. Now, uh, when attacked, damage taken will be decreased by 40% at all times. It's the only damage reduction passive that Lolo has, but with good status, it will not be a problem. Then, on the end of a turn, we get 2 BP. On the start of a turn, we get another 2. So we have 7 BP per turn, at least before we even attack. And then we have a 25% chance to charge skill number 3, that we'll be discussing in a few. When you land an attack, you're gonna chase with right claw and left claw. And yes, Lolo does slash damage, just like Pretinha is scratching me right now. Because cats prefer to do that, instead of biting, instead of punching. And those two attacks have plenty of additional effects and are actually skill 1 and 2. Well. Both attacks are fast when using as command and are single target and do slash damage. Has only 8 power. Lolo is not here to do damage, but both will have different effects. Before attacking, we'll cast familiar protection. We'll be discussing this in a few. And then one is more offensive, also recovering 1 VP for everyone. And then applying an attack boost of 30% following on max level and as a chase as 25% following. Only for one turn though. And then the left claw is defensive. It will then recover HP around 400 and then cast a defense boost that decreases damage taken by 15%, but only for one turn. It doesn't really matter what you choose, it will depend on the situation of the fight. If you're decreasing damage taken by too much, you can even use the right claw if you want as your command and then chase again with right claw and then one extra left claw. The thing is, you're gonna get three familiar protection total, and this is important because of the way stuff works. Oh my god, my uh, Pertinius is appearing! <laughs> She's a ghost! And the interesting thing is that familiar protection is an effect that will happen all the time during the fight. You even cast it five times on start, because when you are attacked, you're gonna grant two different effects. An attack boost of 50% and a defense boost of 20%. Both last for two turns. Since you have 5 stacks of this, and you are going to attack with either Cat's Right Claw, or Cat's Left Claw, or even Skill Tree, let's call it Cat's Rush Bite. This is a single target attack slash, you can only be used 2 times per battle until you recharge, you have a 25% chance to recharge every turn. And it will then apply the same attack boost and defense boost from both claws, but then also a BP cost reduction of 2 points for 2 turns. And it's a little stronger, as power, but has a higher cost, 13 BP. It's actually okay to use it every time that you have it available, and Lolo will always have enough BP 
he gets only seven but usually nine ten or more bp per turn if you use lolo together with Sunni, you're gonna get even more you always have enough bp to use but then okay uh we can cast eight familiar's protection on turn one five from start and then three by attacking how good is that imagine eight stacks of 50 percent attack boost eight stacks of 20 percent defense boost you're gonna decrease damage taken by so much that lolo is the best type of character to decrease damage taken on turn one and allow you to survive versus enemies that do insane amounts of damage and from point one wards you then have to be okay with just three stacks because that's what you get by attacking and since it lasts for two turns you will actually have as much as six attack boosts and six defense boosts. the defense boost is part is good enough because you get hit by the enemy and you already trigger all the stacks and you will actually just have to care about the first hit of the enemy for example on turn two you have three stacks working and three stacks waiting to work so first time the enemy hits you have three times 20 percent damage reduction then after the first hit of the enemy six times 20 percent damage reduction and that will lead into decreasing damage taken by quite a lot that the attack boost part's not that crazy because if you attack before the enemy that means that you already use it your attacks the enemy will then attack you and you will only be able to choose the attack boost on the next turn so even if it says two turns you're only taking benefit of a max of 150 percent damage improvement if you were uh, using lolo and a formation here guard focus or even lolo together with hana and with hana uh, it kind of works well as well because hana will make everyone enter delay and when they enter delay they will then attack after the enemy that means that they will then reach 300 percent attack boost from six different stacks well that is beside turn one because we have higher effects on turn one they work pretty well as well because Hana can debuff and buff the enemy, something that Lolo doesn't do. And there are other cards that work super well with Lolo, but we'll be talking about them in a few. Besides all of that, Lolo still has another passive where he will cast attack boost of 15% every turn. And 5 stacks of heat up for extra 10% damage improvement for the whole fight for everyone. So another 65% damage increase from turn 5 onwards. Okay, uh, Lolo has attack, defense boosts, BP, generation, HP, recovery. That means that he works super well with uh, current meta character, that is Tsuna. Tsuna is really, really useful. We have higher endurance in Will, the agility is higher, both are fast attackers, but they don't clash in anything. Tsuna will decrease damage taken for everyone by 30% in one stack. Tsuna will also buff status when attacking, reaching as much as 45% status buff when ready and using two chases. And when attacking, Tsuna will cast 6 stacks of 10% defense boost, different than 20%. But Tsuna goes before the enemy, usually attacking and casting all 6 defense boosts for all hits. While Lolo has the problem that he will then have only 3 stacks. On the next turn and then the enemy attacks and you have six stacks but they have 20 percent volley while tsuna only has 10 percent volley but tsuna has the extra 30 percent from the first passive and also can cast Murali down nothing here will clash all attack and defense boosts can stack status buffs are coming only from tsuna and Murali down will be only from tsuna as well tsuna does much more damage than lolo but the defense boosts from Lolo are a little better. So, actually, Lolo is Amiya's cat, but he's actually best boss with Tsuna. If you have those two characters, you'll be safe for a lot of future content. That's why I didn't pull for Amiya, because I really think that those two are usually enough for most content if you care about. Now, uh, we shall also think about other characters that will also help Lolo. And... People like Jiva number 5 will also help a lot because we can buff offensive status and we can give the extra EP that Jiva wants for skill 3 usage every single turn to apply even more buffs. And Lolo will be good to be used with any other character that needs lots of EP to keep using skill 
3, for example. It's also crazy to check on Hana now that is actually power creeped by Lolo. She needed to cast two full to the party, and then full stomach benefits, everyone will get 30% damage reduction, and then all the other four characters will trigger defense boosts of 25% up to a max of four stacks of 25. And extra attack boosts, extra VP generation, but all of them are inferior to Lolo that does not need to place anyone into the lay state. So, although they can be used together, Lolo replaces Hana in most squads now. Lolo also replaces Shirei, because you are going to get the extra defense boosts and BP generation that Shirei was giving you. And Shirei still has that very good mechanic where he can revive and block damage so that this person will actually survive the next turn. So he still has some place in squads, you can use Shirei, Lolo and Suna together if you want. Uh, you can also prefer to use Amiya with Lolo in some squads, because Amiya can provide you very good support if you are using Sun squads as well, and if you are taking full benefit from the weak defense and resist offense as well. And Lolo will also be very useful for Emart's Remembrance, especially if you're pulling here with Gurman. Lolo will be everywhere in most squads because it just works. You can simply place Lolo in a squad and it will improve the performance of everyone. Well, there's no much else to be said. You will have 3 stacks of familiar protection that will lead you to having 6 defense boosts of medium effect, lots of EP generation. You can also decide to heal twice if you want with Lolo just by using Cat's Left Claw. And alongside three healings from Suna, that's already five. And actually four stacks of very small healing is already similar to a small healing from people like Mirza in the past or Polka. And now we can get five with characters that give you much more stuff. Lolo is a very good character. I believe a must have. I cannot say that he's better than Suna. They are a little different, but they are the best characters in the game right now. And they both deserve a 5.5 .5 out of 5. That's how good they are. Now let's move into the next one that will be Scarecrow, and Scarecrow has 107% Endurance in Will. Those Valories are pretty safe. And 130% Dax routine, okay, but not as high as Nukers. And 97% Agility, that in my opinion should have been higher because he's a buffer. Now, Scarecrow decreases damage taken for the whole squad by 30% at all times. Scarecrow also makes it so that all your characters will do critical damage versus birds and flying enemies. That's because of the lore of a Scarecrow being attacked by birds. Also has 30% damage increase at all times, reduce damage taken when resisting by 40, and has a 37% chance to evade resistant attacks, much like Intrinsic. Then, on the start of battle, 12 VP to actually choose the skills he wants to use. Has 45 points of OG Gorge every turn, because he wants to get into Overdrive every turn, if possible. It won't be so easy to get into that though. And on the start of battle, we cast five stacks of Mattering Brand to all enemies. That is a very interesting type of effect that is similar to Crazy Love from the S's Word version of Rock Bouquet. That you cast this to the enemies and you have five stacks that will be there for two turns. And then when you land a blunt attack, you are going to cast an attack boost to your party of 15% that lasts for two turns and stacks. The problem with this is that you will have then a problem with the order of the attack boosts, meaning that you don't know which of your cards goes first and who actually benefits from this, but it does really improve the damage, and it's not just about this stack, you can actually apply many more stacks that will then improve the damage of blunt squads, but you need to use blunt attacks and that really restricts the usage of the Scarecrow, although for Remembrance, well, all gunners will be doing blunt damage, save for a few. Also, on the start of a turn, we'll cast three different other special effects for blunt damage dealers. You're going to recover 2 BP when using blunt attacks. It can only happen once. And then, if you use blunt attacks, you're going to trigger a defense boost that will decrease damage taken by 10% for two turns and stack. And will also buff your endurance and will by 20%. Now, those two effects don't have a limit. If you're using a character like Leon, you can keep getting more and more defense boosts, endurance and will buffs without any limit. It's very nice because nowadays most cards have chases and even Scarecrow has chases as well. 
Now, when landing an attack, you recover 1 BP. You already recover 2 from the passive, meaning that you actually have at least 7 BP per turn. When attacking, we we'll always chase with Swift. That is his skill number 1. That is a double hit E power attack that hits random enemies. 2 BP cost when using as command, free to use as a chase. And this skill will actually also trigger the mattering brand effects two times because it's based on hit, not on attack. Then we have skill number two called sniping shot and skill number three called jumping snipe. Both skills are what you're going to be using all the time. And it depends on the fight. If there's just one target, you're going to use skill number two. If there are multiple targets, you're going to use skill number three. And both skills are fast and we will apply Mattering Brand as well. If it's just one enemy, 11 PP cost for a double S power attack that casts 10 stacks of Mattering Brand. If it's AoE, 11 BP cost for a B power attack that will cast 5 stacks of the Mattering Brand. The only problem is that you need to hit the enemy to apply the effect. It's not like in some cases where you apply the effect before, then you attack and you can already trigger the effect. In this case, no. Scarecrow will use this attack and then he needs to land his chases in order to start triggering. When attacking on overdrive, he's going to double the effects of skill number 2 and 3. Don't use switch on overdrive because you're not going to get the extra chases. So, you can actually give 20 stacks of Mattering Brand for one enemy or 10 stacks of Mattering Brand for multiple enemies. But then you have to choose your character as well in order to keep triggering more and more Mattering Brands. It's super hard to have all of the effects running because your character will have to attack right after Scarecrow, keep applying more of the effects, and then on the next turn, you attack again to keep stacking for two turns. But uh, generically speaking, Scarecrow was doubling the damage of my Remembrance Squad when used it in the right ways overdriving every single turn, but it's not so easy to, since he gets only 45 points, the formation over accelerate will give you extra 15 to 60, then you have to find some more OG points somewhere else. When you get hit by the enemy, it's 8 points, you use Scarecrow on the Hana Warrior fight, it's going to help you defeat the Hana Warriors, and will also allow you to reach overdrive faster because the attack will way too much. But Scarecrow is also very good to be used with someone that we just got, and that one is Minstrel. Minstrel attacks multiple times, also helping you get extra triggers, and it's AoE. That means that Minstrel works for both single target or multiple enemies, and Minstrel can also give you the extra buff break effect, and also improves blunt damage, debuffs the enemies, buffs allies, stuff that the Scarecrow doesn't do. Scarecrow is here to decrease damage taking a little and amplify your damage by a ton. But the Scarecrow itself will not be doing too much. Minstrel is very useful if you have to fight multiple enemies, but versus one target, Minstrel is there just as a debuffer and buff breaker than as a damage dealer. But as an AoE damage dealer, Minstrel is exactly much better than you think, and he will get a better damage output because of Scarecrow, but you can also use other characters like Warrior that just got released as well, that is also a blunt damage dealer, that can also chase and can attack uh, applying debuffs, but it won't be so good if you are thinking about characters like, for example, the Antarg. The Antarg would be better if he was like in a Hero Guard Focus formation, being the last one attack after everyone else is already attacking and provided more attack boosts because he only has one hit big hit and then a uh, extra hit via chase and an extra one on overdrive so a max of three attacks three hits but if we have cards that have multiply bullets like leon leon benefits more because he can actually uh, keep triggering more of the Mattering Brand effect. The next Leon will also attack even more times, so it will be very easy to pair up with Scarecrow. It's hard to take full benefit of Scarecrow, he's actually a character that would be more useful on Remembrance, but if you have Minstrel, you can still use him together 
in hard challenges because you barely take any damage when using Minstrel anyway. But Scarecrow is also very easy to skip since he's here more for blunt squads and they are not so easy to build in my opinion. I believe Scarecrow deserves uh, 4 out of 5 and the next one would be Gurman that has 100% endurance and 110% will. Those are safe values, nothing really special. 130% agility and 92% STR. As you can see, another character that doesn't really focus on doing damage, but the high agility is nice because Gurman wants to cast some support skills. On the start of battle, he will fuel all overdrive gauges and then will cast Therapeutic Nuts and Exciting Nuts. Those are effects that trigger only on the end of turn and the exciting nuts, if you are equipped with an MR weapon, yeah, Gurman is a MR specialist for remembrance, but could also work theoretically outside if you can make a full MR squad, but you have difficulty. So, we'll give you 25 points of OG Gauge and a very small recover, that would be around 400. This is very useful. The other version is different, you recover HP and BP. OG points will usually be better and places Gurman into competition with the Antarg that we just talked about. Because the Antarg also gives you BP. The Antarg will allow you to get 4 BP and also will recover 25 points of OG Gorge to your character and 25 points to another. But they still stack and when using them together you're gonna get overdrive mostly every turn with all characters. That's nice because they complement each other pretty well. Okay, and then on the start of a turn, you we'll trigger 5 stacks of Weapon Enhanced MRs every turn for a total of 100% damage increase for MRs characters on turn 5 onwards. Then we'll also uh, cast over an Enhance, improving overdrive damage by 30% each time. So on turn 5 onwards, 150% overdrive damage improvement. By the end of a turn, we'll get 2 extra BP and also 25 points of OG Gauge, meaning that Gurman will try to reach overdrive faster than most other characters. Then we have here a uh, 40% damage improvement for all MRs in the party. And if they are attacked by an attack that will cause resist, then decrease damage taken by 40%. As you can see, very nice effects they are for the whole squad. But if they are using MRs, in Remembrance, they are always using, but outside of Remembrance, you're not going to make a uh, MR squad with ease. When attacked with decrease damage taken at all times by 40% too, and at the end of a turn, we recover HP by around 1.5 thousand. As for skills, we have Mold Spiral, that is C power and free, so that you don't need to use a normal attack on Overdrive when you don't have enough PP. But it's Pierce Damage. Gurman does not do blunt damage. It's crazy. So, Gurman does not really work with people like Scarecrow and Minstrel. Then we have two different skills that we'll be using all the time. And they are pretty similar. I uh, like Lolo, but not even close to the full potential of Lolo. We have some very similar stuff. 9 BP cost, B power. Before attacking, we recover all surviving allies HP by around 400. Okay, nice. Then we'll grant all surviving allies hidden art in arts, both for attack and defense. This will improve MRT's damage by 20% for two turns, and will also decrease damage taken by 10% for two turns. So this is not really that powerful. That will improve the damage potential by 15% and reduce damage taken by 10%, only for MRs as well. Well, since it lasts for two turns, you can stack it twice. It helps, not really all that important. And now, on overdrive attacks, we grant all other surviving allies therapeutic nuts or exciting nuts depending on the skill that you're choosing. So that's how you reapply the effects, Therapeutic Nuts and Exciting Nuts. You already have one stack that is permanent in battle for each, but then you will actually be able to have one running twice of your choice. 
and in my opinion it's usually better to go for the exciting nuts so that you have extra OG dodge to try to do overdrive every single turn. It will still depend on your character, it already has extra OG points, but for example, a character that has 45 points of OG Gauge and has two stacks of Exciting Nuts, that's already 95 points of OG Gauge. If the enemy hits you once, you already enter Overdrive. But in some fights, you may prefer the extra BP? I don't know. I believe that Exciting Nuts is the way to go. So... Urman himself will also be entering overdrive almost every turn if you choose to go for the Exciting Nuts route. And that is helpful because he is a character that is already improving your overdrive damage. And you also start the fight with OG Gauge to apply defensive support right on start. Okay, so Gurman is a support type character that works for MR to Remembrance and could theoretically work for other type of content, but it's hard to make a full MR based squad. I will say that you can use Gurman with Creator, although Creator will not be giving him the Sun effect. You can also use him together with Bonnie, if you pull it for Bonnie. Bonnie is a damage dealer, but a selfish one. We also have Fire Lord. There's Misty, that is a very good debuffer. Real Queen. Some of these units will pair well with Gurman if you decide to use Gurman outside of Remembrance. But you don't need to. I don't think that the effects that you get here are that good that justify using Gurman to have a full MR based squad instead of using Lolo, for example and using diverse squads the way you want. Anyway, uh, I believe Dagorman as a character is a 3.5 out of 5, but a 5 out of 5 for Remembrance is just placing Gurman in a squad will allow it to survive a ton. I used Gurman on Remembrance and it made me do better damage while decreasing damage taken by half or more while still healing. It was actually very useful, but it depends if you care too much about Remembrance or not. Anyway, let's get back into the banner image and let me call here Pretinha. Pretinha, come here to the end of this. Uh, is it worth summoning for this banner? Of course it is, just because of Lolo and because of Pretinha, because if you follow this channel, you probably like her, right? And Lolo is a really good character, like I said, a 5.5 out of 5. Really helpful, the best companion for Tsuna. Scarecrow works, but mostly on Remembrance and Urman mostly on Remembrance too. Sadly, the banner companions of Lolo Banner are not that great as Tsuna Banner. Tsuna Banner was incredible, the best banner in the game so far. Even a Mia Banner has better companions. But Lolo is, like I said, tied with Tsuna as the best character in the game. So that still improves the banner value. I believe we shall give it a gold award, mostly because of Lolo, but the other characters are at least not terrible. I pull it here, got Lolo, Scarecrow and Gurman in a single multi with a very good luck during my livestream. If you wanna pull here, get Lolo and get out, you get out too soon. I think that Scarecrow and Gurman only makes sense if you either have Mistral to pair up with Scarecrow and you are on a pool number 10 on wards, or if you are a fan of Gourmand or need help on arts, and also only if you are only 5 multi pulls away from a PT point, and even then, I prefer to wait and see what they are doing with the next banners. Anyway, this is my opinion, what is yours? Say here in the comment section, thank you so much for watching, please subscribe if you haven't, and I see you soon in the next video or live stream. Goodbye.